If I was installing a play, one of my personal favorites is an old school play called Shallow Cross. So it starts off right here with, if we're in a two back formation, one of my favorite is a strong right ace. We put an F left because you always got to get in a little bit of motion action. And we'll call an X shallow cross here with three jet protection. We'll have a shallow cross by that X. So if he was over here, we got the Z, he's going to run a post. We got the Y, he's running a deep sit with a potential chance to work back. And we've got a swig route here, which is a swirl or dig depending on his split. So on this play right here, we love this thing. We got the back, he's check whiting because any man coverage, we got a chance for that X to run away and he's our number one. The quarterback, he'll take a drop. He'll take what we call a controlled seven step drop, which means this thing can happen at any point. You never know. You can take a full seven if it's zoned, get a nice little hitch and throw that to the one, then work back up to the two. If it's man coverage, he's gotta be ready to rip that thing to him on the run so he can put it in front of him and he can catch and go score a tug alicious. Now we've got this post right here. We love that verse quarters coverage. That's so much fun because if you do get that strong safety potentially pinning down and running with that Y, you can get great leverage on that corner for a touchdown also to him, which is great. The backside progression, we've got that swirl. He's number three, and then we got an outlet by the back. So we got that controlled seven. Going back, looking at that number one spot over there in that area. We're looking for him number one to the tight end two if somebody jumps to him. And then we've got our swig on the backside with a big time chance for a tug here or that man covered shallow. And you know what, you, I don't know, you could always sit, switch your cadence up and you can get yourself an Omaha. So you can see here, we've got nice little gifts that just jump in here and we're going Omaha, Omaha. We owe that a whole bunch with, uh, with Peyton. We might utilize that too. We're running this play, one of my favorite strong right ace. We got a F left, three jet X shallow cross. You know, from an offensive perspective, you want to have a huge playbook. You want to have all kinds of different things that you can do because every team's different. Every single person that you put out on that field does different things. So for me, it's about trying to figure out as fast as we can what those guys do well and then try to find as many different ways to do that over and over again to put those guys in the best position. Uh, moving guys around, uh, utilizing all their different talents is going to be critical and we just have to figure that out as we get into practice. Looking back at it, there's been a couple people that have been huge influences on me. One, my father, without a doubt, uh, on how he trained the quarterback, how he talks to the quarterback, how he works with the quarterback, because it's all about that position. When that position is successful, everybody's going to be successful. So I think it's how you train them, and that's that West Coast uh, mentality that we talk about. It's how you teach their footwork, how their feet are, what guide them through progression. So I think we're always going to be teaching uh, from that standpoint. After growing up in the West Coast, growing up in the different run games that I've done in my past, I think to to be able to create that uh, Mike Shanahan type world uh, is so critical because it's this outside zone and I mean I remember when I was a kid watching John Elway throw into McCaffrey and uh, all those guys down the field with huge plays with the quarterback you know nobody's around him and he's launching it down the field so I think being able to understand that has now added a whole nother world and dimension kind of combining this West Coast world drop back quick game and then meshing in this outside zone play pass explosive uh, plays down the field. So it, 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 there's been a lot of people, a lot of systems, uh, a lot of different things, and now have a lot to be able to uh, throw at those players and see what sticks to them. How we doing? Hey, my I'm name is Jaden. Jaden, how you doing? Nathaniel. Major welcome part. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hi, coach. Hey, how we doing? Welcome. Nice to Welcome see you. To Thank you. Look at this. Oh, we got the slides. Some flying the kites. I want to go on that tree and swing. Hi, how you doing, Nathaniel? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wonderful to meet you. You ready for this? Oh, heck yeah. How y'all doing? Come here. Give me some bumps. Give me some bumps. There you go. How you guys doing? You guys having fun today? Give me some bumps. Give me some bumps. Oh, look at that. Is that a dinosaur tooth? Look at that. Nice to see you. Hey, buddy. How you doing? How you doing? Hey, girl. How you doing? How you doing? Tim Patrick's up there. Portland Sutton. That's great. Pretty cool. I've been loving to get to meet those guys. Oh, the hoop court. The best part. Oh, the best part by far. Oh, we got to hoop it up with him. We got to play some knockout. That's my, that's my, that's my stuff right there. 
Don't be nervous now. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Oh, God. I, oh. Oh. Yes! Nice job. <laughs> Good job, man. Woo! Holy cow. <laughs> this is the art room. Come here, Paul. We have a special guest in the building. Oh, I used to get those, you know, the posters that you can color in. I used to love those things. Oh, gosh. Like the one with the mice. Yeah. Pirates and stuff when I was younger. I used to love that. So all the kids are making cards. They're going to be okay. put into Meals on Wheels deliveries for all oh, okay. local seniors. Um, so they're making kindness cards. Oh, I love it. I had to get some good ideas here. I know. It took me a second. I had to see what they were doing. So yeah. So all right. Let's Everybody see what we're doing here. I'm going to do the Broncos Let me get the other Ooh, I like Broncos colors. All I know how to do is draw a bird. I can draw birds and goofy. It's like a more like a duck. Which I guess is a bird, right? Cool. All right, you want to see the other bird? Do you, do you, do you know who the Roadrunner is? Can I? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh gosh. Have lots of good kindness with these birds. They just ooze happiness. There you go. Now you got to put a nice message on it for somebody. Everybody say hi to Everly. That's my daughter. That's Everly. Everybody say hi to Everly. Hi, Everly. Hi. Maybe your daddy will bring you to see us one day. Heck yeah, we will. Okay. Now that she we sees me here. Fun here. We do a lot of things. I lost in knockout, Everly. I lost in basketball. What are you going to be? Uh, you did? Yep, I lost in knockout. Don't be mad at me. I love you. I'll call you later, okay? I used to be a big sticker guy. Do you love stickers? I mean, they're phenomenal. Who doesn't love stickers? I don't know. If you don't love stickers, I'm not, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, look at it. On the move. Sorry, cheerleading's going on. I can't miss this. Go blue! Go orange! Fight! Yeah! I know, I have to come back. I have to bring my family too, man. I want to bring my kids here. I, 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 my, my one daughter called me, so I had to... <laughs> I had to answer. She's like, I want to go there and hang out. She's welcome. Awesome. Anytime. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No, this is great. Very excited to be here to introduce the 2022 Broncos coaching staff. It takes some time to be able to put a staff together and a great staff is so important. It's so important for the foundation of what you're trying to accomplish. When you look at a coaching staff, I think the number one thing is character. You want to have guys that are great people, guys that care about the football players, are excited about uh, being around the football players, and, and just good role models. And then at the same time, uh, you know, you want to be sure they have a nice bit of humility so everybody can be coached. I can be coached. Everybody you want to be able to learn. Uh, efficiency is so important with a coach because we have so much work that we can do. We have so many things we can look at. Uh, right here, uh, Justin Outen. We've been together uh, for three years at Green Bay. Before that, he was at Atlanta. And uh, we had a great time sitting in those rooms and game planning at Green Bay together. Being in Denver, uh, we played back here in 2016 when I was with Atlanta. And you can see the passion that uh, Broncos country has. It's, it's an electric uh, environment. It's, it's a fun environment to be in. You can see that the fans really love and support this team and um, just the history, the former players that have walked through these, these halls. It's unbelievable to be a part of that now and I'm very excited to be here. The ball is everything and you're gonna hear that over and over again. When you win the turnover battle, plus one, you're 72% win percentage. And then if you're plus two, it goes up to 82%. So that ball is everything in this offense. So we're gonna make it look very complex to the defense, but keep it simple for our guys so they can play fast. And the goal is to identify each guy's talents and make them come to life on Sundays. This is a young, hungry team, and you can see that on the video. And um, there's a lot of tools that, that fit our system, and it's exciting to uh, get started with those guys. But you can see the effort is there. You can see that there's some tools to work with in, in this capacity and, and what we're bringing to the scheme. And I'm excited to work with them. Adrian, I've known for so long. He's been working as a defensive backs coach 
and uh, pass game coordinator at the Rams, did an amazing job with that back end. He's been with some great coordinators. Well, it was just an unbelievable opportunity. Anytime you could become a defensive coordinator in the NFL, um, it's uh, something that we all aspire to and um, a chance to uh, implement our own schemes and uh, our own vision on defense. And then it's even that much better because, you know, the relationship I have with Nathaniel Hackett, uh, just uh, my confidence in his ability to be a head coach and to do great things as a head coach, as a leader, um, his energy that he's going to bring. I think it's really going to galvanize this whole team, this whole city, and so it's very exciting. At the end of the day, we're here to win a championship, and that's the goal. Um, we're going to fight to, to get that done, and uh, we're not going to settle for anything less. And uh, my part, uh, along with uh, all the defensive coaches, is to bring a championship-level defense, and we're going to strive every day and every moment to get that done. I don't feel like this team is that far away. Um, the defense played really well last year. I believe that we could uh, do uh, take another step in that direction. Um, I believe that the offense is going get, to uh, get better with Nathaniel and his new staff and uh, uh, Dwayne Stukes on a special team, so it's going to make that thing go too. So we're really excited about just the possibilities here because we feel like with what George has done and what the, uh, the players have done in the past that there's a great foundation. Dwayne Stukes, I mean, heck, uh, Rich Bisaccia, Joe D. Camillus, two of the premier special teams coaches, but to watch Dwayne and him become his own special teams coordinator, to see him kind of become a great combination of those two guys. You know, I'm just grateful that all three of these guys are here with me at this table. Coming here to the Denver Broncos, the, the atmosphere, the fans, uh, just being part of the history of the organization was enticing for me. Working with a good friend of mine, with Nathaniel Hackett, again, um, I, I couldn't turn that down. Also working with E. Gerald, working with Mark Dixon, guys that I have previous experience with, guys that I know that when things get tough, I know how they're gonna respond. All those type of things attract you to this job, but just the culture and the atmosphere and how much they love football out here was really a deciding factor. As far as special teams, we wanna have an attack mentality. Uh, we wanna play fast, we wanna be physical, um, and we wanna dictate to our opponents the tempo of the game. We're trying to raise the standard and build a culture around here where guys are excited to take part in special teams. It's a we not me mentality, right? In order for us to get what we want to get to, everybody has to buy in and play special teams. It's about being just a damn good teacher. I mean, <laughs> that's what we are. We get up in front of groups, uh, we teach them techniques, we teach them fundamentals, we teach them the system. So they have to be great teachers, and I think that's what we've assembled here. Uh, a combination of old, young, new, experienced, inexperienced, uh, and just a lot of guys with, with great energy and all those four characteristics. It starts in the fall, you know, when you're, our scouts are going to colleges and we're going to live games. And so that's where the scouting really, really starts in the fall. And then, you know, after the season, you know, we get into the All-Star Games and, uh, you know, we, we, we get some more answers there at the All-Star Games. And then we get into our draft meetings and we just finished our draft meetings. And so we have our initial uh, draft board set and now we go to the combine and we get some more answers to the test, just another part of the process. So when you go to games, for instance, you know, you get to the game early, you talk to your sources, you talk to coaches, and then just as many times you can see these players in a competitive environment, whether it be the game, whether it be the combine, where they're competing with other players, you know, running 40s, vertical jumps, uh, the drills, and then pro days, another competitive environment. And so they're all different, but it's all part of the process. It's vital to see a player live and uh, you can watch the tape and think you know a player then when you see him live it's totally different just because you're seeing him in person, you're seeing the size, um, you know you're seeing how he interacts with teammates, how is he after a bad throw, how is he after an interception, 
How is he when they're down three touchdowns? So how, how does he interact with his coaches, the referee? Does he, does he throw the ball? Does he, you know, there's a lot of things you can see live. How is he in a two minute drill? Um, you know, how is he with 40 seconds left in the half and, and it's situationally? So you just have a different feel live and um, it's really hard to put a grade or, or, or get on the table for someone until you do see them live. We like to get there early to the game, you know, two, two and a half hours early, get on the field and get with any sources we can, you know, whether that be a coach, whether that be a trainer, whether that be a GA, whether that be a student assistant, you know, and just get as many opinions on these players as we can because the more information we have leads us to better decisions. You walk around the building, there's a buzz, there's a juice, and it's been fun. You know, going through the interview process and interviewing Nathaniel, spending a lot of time, it's, it's everything I thought. His staff is exactly what he said in the interview process. Very energetic, very intelligent, very smart. Uh, you know, diverse staff brings diverse thought, and that's where I think you make the best decisions. But we have everything, you know, we have a lot of cap room. Uh, we have 11 picks, we have five in the first hundred. So we have, you know, all the resources to do what we need to do to take that next step.